Hello biology class. Welcome to the very first uh, lecture here of this course uh, and the very first lecture of our first unit which is nutrients. Nutrients is a little bit of a smaller unit overall. It's good to get us started. It's good to uh, start talking about nutrients because our second unit is digestion and it flows really nicely into that unit. Uh, what I want to do here first though is I want to explain how a lot of this is going to work because this is probably going to be a new format for a lot of us. Um, so just to go over some basic things that I want us all to do every single time we have a lesson. Uh, so this will kind of be a work at your own pace course. There will be some limits, you know, you can't do an entire unit in a whole day because there need to be some checks with me, but uh, you can work more quickly at this. Uh, you can work a little bit more slowly at this overall in particular units. It does all need to get done by the end of the semester though. Uh, essentially, you're going to see a title slide like this when we start a new unit and a, a title slide like this with a new lesson. So this is going to be lesson one about monosaccharides. You're going to see me in the bottom corner along with the uh, lesson title is going to be below me that way, I guess. Uh, all the time as well as my name and the course above me and at the top some key points for the lesson So I'm going to include one two three no more than four key points for each lesson Those are terms to keep track of some ideas to make sure that we connect throughout the entire lesson It's going to remind me to talk about it and it's going to remind you to pay attention when I am talking about those things um you are also going to have a booklet. Uh, I believe it will have a table of contents on the front page along with the title. Uh, I don't have that quite done yet because I'm still working on making all these videos. There should also be uh, a section for the next lesson. Uh, there should be lines that you can write your notes on and we'll get into that. There should be diagrams. There will be the same diagrams that I show you and I refer to so you can write all over those and make notes. You can draw arrows from what you write, uh, all that good stuff. You can highlight, you can circle. And then there's going to be sections uh, that I like to call your job, uh, things that you should do. Uh, they often involve a little bit of research on your part. Go to this website and answer these questions about this disorder. Uh, look up some particular information. Maybe I don't give you a particular website, but you need to find it. Uh, and then come check it with me. There will be times when you need to um, do an activity uh, throughout this course. So there's going to be a lot of variety through what you need to do at the end of each lesson. There's usually only one thing to do. Sometimes there are two uh, and uh, if when we get to the end there tend to be a little bit larger assignments. Uh, when you're done um, and you're looking for the test in that unit you're going to hand the booklet in to me and I'm going to make sure that you've done what you need to do to be able to write that test. So if I see that you've skipped three or four lectures, then you'll have to do those before you're able to write the test. Um, again, you can work more quickly uh, as long as there are uh, frequent check-ins with me. Without further ado, let's just get into it and we'll learn as we go. So this is the first lesson about monosaccharides. We'll get into what those all what those are. So uh, we have Nutrients. So I might pause it here and I might write down what uh, is on the slide and then unpause it and you can listen to me talk about it. Underline important things, bold important things, write extra things. You can also listen to me talk about it first and then pause it and write down what I have emphasized and what's important. So um, overall for this unit, uh, we're going to talk about the materials that are needed for the development and maintenance of life. So uh, nutrients are these materials. Uh, we're gonna talk about four or five different things. So proteins, carbohydrates, lipids, vitamins and minerals, and water. Water is a constant that all living things need to survive. So we're going to break it up into these four parts. We're going to start with carbohydrates. So monosaccharides are a type of carbohydrate. Um, and we're going to differentiate between nutrients that can't be synthesized by our body that we need to eat. Those are essential nutrients. You've probably heard of those in many different commercials. 
uh, for any different number of diets or foods. There's lots of essential nutrients. Those are foods that you need to eat. Uh, and, and they must be obtained. They must be obtained from the environment. Um, other nutrients you can create within your own body from the building blocks that you've already uh, ingested. So there's four different categories that we're going to talk about. Water is a constant through all of them, and we're going to start off with carbohydrates. So won't let me click through with my mouse. There we go. So carbohydrates are the same as sugars. If you're eating a spoonful of sugar, you're eating a spoonful of carbs. Uh, the primary use for carbohydrates in our body is energy. So sugar is energy. You know that you know if you drink an energy drink, it's full of sugar, you get an energy boost. Uh, eventually you crash, but you get an energy boost at the time. Uh, so carbohydrates are composed of three elements, and you should be familiar with these from science, hydrogen, carbon and oxygen. Uh, there are sometimes some other ones involved, uh, but it is mainly those three. And the simplest type of carbohydrate is known as a monosaccharide. So that is the title of our um, lesson, a monosaccharide. Uh, and it is a type of nutrients. Uh, some examples of monosaccharide are glucose, which you might have heard of before, that is sugar. Uh, fructose, which is kind of a hidden sugar, and galactose, which is a little bit less common. Uh, these are easily digested by the body and any excess is quickly converted into fat. So if you have too much sugar in your diet, you're going to convert that into fat for storage. Uh, that is what our body is designed to do. It is designed to uh, store uh, carbohydrates so that we can use them later. If their primary use in the body is energy, if we store it, we can use it for energy later. So you'll notice that I mentioned glucose and fructose here. Uh, those are a couple of our key points. Let's get into those. So this is what a glucose molecule looks like. It is made of carbons, that is the C's. It is made of hydrogens, which are the H's, and oxygens, which are all the O's. It is a six carbon ring, so uh, we have one, two, three, four, five, six carbons here, and it makes a ring. Uh, and we have these OHs that alternate up, down, up, down. It is kind of characteristic of glucose. So uh, I would definitely take note of this, practice writing this down, uh, maybe make a cue card for this and um, copy it out and test yourself. But this is a structure that you're going to need to know. So the structure of glucose. So we have six carbons, one, two, three, four, five, six. We have an oxygen uh, within the ring, and then we have alternating OH groups. On the right it goes up and then down and then up and then down. Uh, that's how I always remember the structure. So uh, some helpful hints. There are six carbons within uh, the sugar for glucose. The ring is made of five carbons and a single oxygen. And the left hydroxide starts pointing down and then it alternates, or you could say the right hydroxide starts pointing up and it alternates as you move uh, that way. So uh, those are some key points of how I remember what the structure of glucose looks like. Now you should have this uh, already on your uh, paper. The structure should be there along with the structure of fructose, which is our key point three that we're going to talk about next. So this is a picture of fructose. It is similar in a lot of different ways. Uh, it also has six carbons, one, two, three, four, five, six. Uh, but the ring is only made of four carbons and one oxygen. We have uh, these CH2OH groups coming off of each side. Uh, and again, the OH is pointed down and alternates as you go. Um, so, some helpful hints. Six carbon sugar, so there's six of them again, but only four of them are in the ring, and the oxygen goes on top, which makes it five, a uh, five-membered ring. Uh, there are carbons sticking off of both sides, which is unlike the uh, glucose molecule. So those are two different types of sugars. They are able to be ingested very quickly, and then they uh, cause a big spike in energy. But anything that you don't use gets stored away as fat. And that is generally not what we want. Uh, it used to be because we used to want to store energy uh, if there was a period of time when food wasn't available. 
But now food is so readily available, we don't need to store um, our nutrients like that. So again, this is the fructose molecule and this is the glucose molecule. Uh, oh, they're beside each other. The um, That's excellent. I shouldn't have gone back and forth. So that is the picture that I believe you have. Um, make note. So monosaccharides. As you can see, monosaccharides make up all carbohydrates. So if you can imagine that if you have these stacked together, uh, we would have a very long carbohydrate. The main source of monosaccharides are found in foods with high volumes of fructose, and glucose. So that would be sugary drinks. Uh, lots of fruits have lots of fructose in them. Uh, it is a necessary component for the body, but an, accent, an excess of almost anything is never beneficial. And sugar can have very um, dire consequences, especially in terms of heart disease. We are learning more about that now. What I'd like you to do, so this is the your job portion, and it should be just on the next page of your notes. Oh, it's at the bottom of the notes and onto the next page. I'd like you to visit the website that's at the bottom of the screen. It's also in your um, booklet. And summarize each section as best you can in your own words. Uh, the bolded questions correspond to each section. Uh, it's pretty self-explanatory, and at the end, I'd like you to summarize the conclusion of the article in your own words. Again, it's important that this is in your own words. Uh, you have read the information and turned it um, into something that makes sense to you. Uh, that's the only way that it will be, it will be beneficial. Um, so take note again of the key points, nutrients overall, the two structures of glucose and fructose, and um, monosaccharides being the building blocks of all carbohydrates. Uh, if you guys have any questions, I'll see you at school. You can send me an email. Um, and I appreciate you guys watching and appreciate all the hard work that you're going to do over the course of this semester. Again, if you have questions, please let me know. Uh, and thanks again. Bye.